Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ 200-204. Therapy quote number 200. Transference should be explored for what it is, an opportunity to study the way an individual's past influences their experience of the present. So there again, the therapist is not meant to collude with the client's projections and then get into that negative symbiosis. It doesn't work. Uh, but if the therapist can observe his projections and his attempts to create a negative symbiosis, he can offer an interpretation. Right. So once again, therapist, uh, sorry, uh, transference is often used in a specific context between the client and the therapist. Uh, so when we refer to this phenomena in general, we can just say projection. Right? So there again, you know, we, we bring the past into the present, you know, um, to try to heal the past. Repetition compulsion. A painful pattern was learned, and we're trying to uh, face it and update it. Right? 201. The difference between a mother who can bear and somehow metabolize her baby's fear and pain and one who, for example, is herself terrified of them is a crucial element in the child's own subsequent capacity to bear and digest such feelings for themselves. So there again is that reference to the holding interject. If the mother can hold the baby, the baby internalizes all those memories, then the, the person has those wonderful memories. They can, it's like they can hold themselves so they're calm. Uh, if the mother is too anxious and isn't able to offer that holding capacity, the child doesn't obtain this holding interject and can become or uh, more anxious uh, as an adult. So the mother's meant to be calm and, uh, and uh, provide that extended womb. From birth to six months, that time is meant to be as comfortable, as safe, like the womb. Right? And then, beginning at six months, there can be a grad, slow, gradual hatching from that symbiotic egg between six months and 36 months. Right. Yeah, there's another quote that said that if the therapist is too anxious, therapy can't take place, you see. That's why a lot of people complain about how they don't get better if the therapist is, has a narcissistic uh, pattern. See, if the therapist has a narcissistic uh, disorder of the self, uh, and he wants to be a therapist, he's using the clients to comfort him under the guise of pretending to be a therapist. So the poor client leaves away fe feeling worse. You know, In other words, the therapist has to be healthier, calmer than the client. It sounds obvious. So that replicates how the mother would be more calmer than an anxious, frightened baby. You know, Similar sort of parallel there. I think the quote was, therapy doesn't take place if the therapist is more anxious than the client. It's a general idea. Two oh two. Heraclides, who argued for the coexistence of opposites, moving opposites, for example, the experience of love and the experience of hate in his or her own life. Next, the client is invited to construct a third meaning in which the two original experiences are combined in the attempt to arrive at some unification of opposites. Example, love and hate coexist in genuine ambivalence, or the third meaning transcends the two original meanings and moves to another polarity. For example, my problem is really about autonomy versus dependence. 
So this uh, again refers to the idea of uh, of healing the split and uh, to reach whole object relations. Um, so if, if the loving memories of the mother can coexist with the frustrating memories of the mother, the person can accept that and hold that, not split them, but hold it. That's considered whole object relations and the psychological birth. On the way to that, maybe the person can update these this polarity. Uh, the loving memories wants to move the person towards autonomy. Uh, the fearful memories wants to move the person towards uh, dependence because of because of, uh, of unmet needs. So there's so he's aware of the two needs. So that updates the two. So now we can think, okay, I have a need for. Uh, self act my self agency at the same time uh, how do I find the support for myself so there's that little the two sides there so this is uh, from Heraclides he's the guy that made the earlier quote the soul is its own source of unfolding he said the soul is its own source of unfolding that refers to the psychic the dynamic psyche that's that's trying to heal and seek wholeness you know Baba Yaga in the fairy tale is directing this and all this right and the idea of uh, holding the two sides uh, that's uh, uh, called uh, whole object relations in object relations theory right. 203 Psychotherapy is often virtually synonymous with helping the person find their self-agency and assume responsibility for their life. So that's just sort of a broad, broad overview uh, to work through the mourning process. Remember, splitting precludes mourning, so heal the splits. The opposites that Heraclides was talking about, bring those opposites together so that that's how mourning takes place. Then the person can find his self agency and, uh, and with that, his moral, his, uh, his moral agency as well. Right? He will assume his own moral personal revolution right? <laughs> to heal himself. 204, we'll end on a quote from Robert Bly. There are eight words for shame in ancient Greek, four words for shame in French, five in German, but only one in English. That means we don't want to think about shame. <laughs> so there's another one of Robert Bly's zingers. He really sprinkled his lectures with, with a lot of these zingers. Several of them have already been presented so far in this series. I think he adds some of the humor uh, in this. He adds humor throughout this thread. Um, so there's another one. We don't want to think about shame. That's why we only have one word in English for it. You know, <laughs> that's that's a defense mechanism, right? You know, someone said the same thing about love. You know, we have other languages have 10, 20, 30, 50, 80, 100 words for love. English, there's only it's pretty much just one, you know. Psychology adds transference love, and we can borrow agape uh, and uh, maybe one or two others. So you see, such an important quality, love, you know. Why, don't, why isn't there a greater vocabulary to describe love? Okay, plutonic love, agape, transference love, not bad. We're, we're increasing our vocabulary. But some languages have like 80, 90 words for the, for the nuances of love, the forms it can take. And similar thing about shame, other languages uh, seem willing to face the feelings of, um, of what happens to a baby when he's unable to receive the love, you know. And um, so that's the Robert Bly. He, he's the one that said, Forgive psychology for its jargon. Just forgive it. And, uh, he also said, um, 
when he when he opened one of his lectures, he said, you know, thirty percent of what I'm gonna about what I'm about to tell you will be wrong. It's up to you to figure out which thirty percent. Right. He wanted to encourage autonomy in his audience. Um, he didn't want anybody forming a negative symbiotic union with him, so he was you know, creating that boundary, I guess. Um, he also said, uh, you know, Jung and Freud, they were, they were such mama boys. That's why psychology is so confused. It's been thrown off from the very beginning. You know? And another author agrees with that quote. In the future, there'll be a quote regarding Orestes. See, Orestes is a metaphor of the guy who faced his anger towards his mother. In metaphorical form, remember fairy tales are true on the inside, not on the outside. But there's a myth describing the boy expressing his anger in metaphor, not literally, not, not actually, just in symbolic metaphorical form. The psychic world described how the representation of the self was able to overcome the representation of the negative rejecting mother side. See, and that author said that should be the founding myth of uh, psychology, Orestes, not Oedipus, right? <laughs> or Jocasta, right? So Orestes, that's for a future video. It's interesting about Orestes. See, a lot of people don't want, don't want to talk about Orestes because when you see the play, people forget that's just a metaphor. A way to describe the psychic world, the object relations world within. We have an unconscious ego, that's the protagonist. We have memories of the mothers being rejecting, that's the witch. She has a mind of her own, that's the inner critic. That can take different forms. The flying monkeys, right, in this one story. There's positive memories of the mother in this psychic world. And uh, that can be the fairy godmother. And she has a mind that can be represented with uh, helpful dwarfs and other helpful figures in the fairy tale, you know, and then there's defense, defensive operations, there's older memories, um, you know, and, and the whole play is directed by Baba Yaga, you know. So there's this whole psychic world, um, and Robert Bly and Miriam Woodman uh, helped to explain, and Marie Louise von Frenz uh, helped to explain that. When we're talking about fairy tales, we're talking about the memories of the child. That that's it. We're just trying in symbolic form. We're trying to talk about the. We're trying to get in touch with the memories to to update our response to our childhood. We're trying to we're trying to heal our memories in the sense of we're trying to heal our understanding of what happened, so we're healing our memories. In a sense, we're healing our past, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess I'll just leave it here. The quotes, uh, all of the quotes are posted below. Thank you very much. This has been TQ200 to TQ204. TQ 200 to TQ 204. See you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.